Michael Hyde will do phone video documentation with Jay Kong, Jack Kilmet Mir, Khalid Al Muhammad, Omar Al Sahri, Sam Mir, Salah Al Ajmi. There is a man made lead that branches off the Morden River and runs parallel. This was originally built to supply to water to the mill's wheel and still does. There is a sluice gate at the entrance to the lead that controls the volumetric flow and acts as a coarse filter. The site is near, in an area of outstanding natural beauty, so any visible structures will have to be sympathetic to the surrounding environment. Currently, the water wheel is used to make flour by grinding grain. <coughs> We need to ensure that the mill's operation will not be affected during and after construction. After consulting the National Trust, we will be running the turbine between 6pm and 6am to allow daytime operating hours for the mill. Following a site inspection carried out on 17th of November 2014, we calculated the basic site specifications we needed. We estimate that we will get a year-round flow of between 110 and 140 litres of water per second. At the fore bay, we will get a gross head of around 8 metres with a net head of around 6.5 metres. These are some of the authorities that need to be consulted with to ensure no regulations of interest. We will need to apply for an abstraction licence for the scheme and get an ecological impact assessment completed. There are many factors to consider when designing a microhydro scheme at, at Coat Hill, such as the turbine, fish screening protection, full bay design, the powerhouse design and construction, also the generator and connection to the power grid, control systems and environmental factors. The design features calculated aimed us towards looking at turbines that work at small head ranges and with relatively low flow rates. With the remote nature of the site there will be limitations set by the local grid operators Western Power Distribution in regards to the maximum, genera maximum generation of power. Choosing the correct and most efficient turbine was a fundamental exercise for this project. We had to create a decision matrix after compiling some research. To conclude the best machine, we looked at both reaction and impulse turbines, and we found that the turbine most suited for our location was the Crossflow. The Crossflow turbine came out to be the most effective as it has high efficiency rates, suitable for the given head height and ideal for the leak's volumetric flow rate. With the calculated values for net head and flow rate, the graph below shows that a 5 kW crossflow turbine would suit the site limitations. This turbine benefits from its unique design as the water flows across the turbine twice before rectifying. This not only improves the harnessing of energy from the volumetric flow of water, but it also acts as a self-cleaning process, which is considerably helpful as the leak flows through a foliage-rich area, which deposits leaves into the streams throughout the year. From calculating water speeds, the turbine shaft should have an approximate rotational speed of 412 revolutions per minute. We have set the turbine up with a ratio of 3.7 to 1, so the generator rotates at approximately 1520 RPM. The micro hydroelectric plant will have an integrated control system to ensure the plant is operating at maximum efficiency while still complying with the regulations set out by the various governing bodies. The control system consists of a computational processing unit along with two flow meters, one located at the mouth of the fore bay and one in the main river, a motorized sluice gate at the head of the leap and an automated pen stop. Due to the fact that the water wheel and the plant cannot be operated simultaneously, a lever will allow the operator to close the pen stop and stop the plant. The first statement checks the flow meter in the river below the leet intake and adjusts the sluice to ensure that the river retains the necessary minimum flow required by the Environment Agency. The second statement checks if an operator has set the water wheel as running. If the water wheel is running, then the pen stop will be closed. The third statement checks whether the flow rate at the head of the fore bay is at optimum flow for the turbine. If the flow is optimum, then no further action is taken, however if it's not, then the control loop continues to the final statement. The final statement uses the readings from the flow meter in the fore bay to adjust the sluice in order to obtain max op uh, optimum flow. The microhydro design that will be implemented will have minimal impact on the surrounding environment. The main impact on the environment will occur during construction and performing 
house foundations and pipe structures. After the installation is complete, measures will be taken to ensure the habitat can be resumed as it was previously. To enhance the speed of recovery, a moss garden will be positioned onto the roof of the turbine house, along with the bird boxes. So the turbine does not affect fish population, control measures will be implemented in order to protect them. There is an existing pool path at the lead intake. The pool path is an effective and traditional type of fish path. They are suitable for most fish species. They are low maintenance and therefore a low cost option. All we propose to do is reinforce the existing structure. To prevent fish entering the lead, the sluice gate opening will be electronically controlled. There will be a metal grate with a 30 mm aperture to prevent large fish becoming trapped within the lead. There will also be a rotating fish path and lead sweep inside the four bay tank, which will feed into the fish path pipe. The pipe will feed back into the main river. These are the essential factors that must be kept in mind when designing a micro hydro power system. To implement a micro hydro system, we will need to construct and improve a few features at the hooks. There will have to be an outbuilding to house the control system from the turbine as well as an outlet channel for the water expelled from the turbine. We will construct visible housing out of locally sourced timber so it will not be an eyesore on the surrounding environment. The foundation will be constructed from a 300mm concrete slab reinforced with 12mm rebar. For the penstock we will use a 300mm diameter pipe. This will withstand the water pressure and the diameter will be large enough not to disrupt the flow of water. The fish pass will be made out of a 500mm diameter pipe. The full bay will be constructed with the same concrete as the foundation but it will be 200mm thick. The bottom section of the tank will contain enough water so that no air will be drawn into the penstock pipe being shown. Also, seen in the drawing, there will be a fish pass pipe that will double as a means of flood defence when the water levels are too high. As seen in the display costings table, the total expenditure will be approximately £82,000, inclusive of labour and parts. This is around £18,000 below the initial forecasted figure of £100,000. The annual gross income for the turbine will be an estimated value of around £3,800. However, once system efficiencies are calculated and the mill usage is taken out, this approximation will most likely be around 3,400 net. With a total expenditure of £82,000, it should take 24 years to pay off. The turbine has an estimated serviceable life of around 80 years though, so it should offer plenty of profitable power for years to come. This is again chart to show the tasks carried out by Group 1 throughout the September to January months. These are the tasks to be carried out in the next few months. 